In this video I'm going to show you how to fit a 21 pin decoder into a Backman Class 47. Being Dave Class 47 I've got quite a few of these locos, I think I'm at 19 or 20 now. And the best part about them is running them, the worst part about it is fitting the decoder. Hopefully I'm able to take you through a successful way of how I do it for anyone that's struggled or is yet to fit the decoders to these impressive background products. So let's get started. Okay, first off, I have a Pico servicing cradle, it's PL70, and it's like this. And this is good for turning the loco upside down and resting it, and it's got these kind of little sponge inserts. It's also got an additional sponge support there for the um, the loco as well if you need to fit it in there if it's a smaller, thinner loco. The Bagman 47 has got six screws holding it, holding the body on to the chassis. You've got two, say the bogies, another two there and you've got one underneath the any in pocket, which is a silver chrome finish screw, and the same at the other end. So these need to be removed before you try to unclip the body. Notice the word try. So I've got a cross screwdriver or Phillips screwdriver, and you really want to try and get one with a magnetic end on it because um, it does help. But the smaller one I've got today is just a normal type so unscrew them. You shouldn't be tight. You should be able to do that no problem. And do the other one. Right with the six screws now removed I'm ready to try and unclip this body. For this in the instructions it tells you that there is clips at the cab windows and the clips are made from the same moulding as the glazing and they're around about here in between the two handrails is your guide and there's there's four of them, one at each corner what I've used is little plastic shims, they're just plastic card or styrene and I've cut them into bits and what I'll do is I'm trying to block this out on camera the best I can is you, you have to prise the corner where you want in the the clip to be, or the, the shim to be inserted. Okay, so you've got to prise that open first with your fingers, and then you try and push in one of the shims. Now, a lot of people have used other bits and pieces of this. I've seen cocktail sticks getting used, and I would recommend that is not the way you do it. They they are too um, wide in diameter, and also they snap. So don't go there. Again. The body is fairly pliable regarding opening it up and squeezing it a little bit and stretching it to get these shims in, okay? And you'll feel it click as you pull the body sides apart and then you put the, the shim in there. Try and get it so you feel it's, shall we say, you know, got a bite onto the, the clip um, that's attached to the glazing. Now, this is one of the earlier well, see earlier now, it's not been retooled in, you know, well over 10 years. I hope if Backman ever do it, they, um, they simplify the removal of the body shell, because it's just, it's one of the most time-consuming tasks that you'll do. Um, you compare it to the, the Class 40, which is, you know, a five-minute job. This is, could, it could be a five-minute job, it could be a 45-minute job, depending on how lucky you are with the body shell and the chassis. So once I've got these in, I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to try and unclip the body. Okay, to remove the body, the shims are in place there. They're kind of pulling the body outwards and releasing the clip around about the, the door handle area there. And what you do is, gently, carefully, you put your fingers under where the shims are and you push outwards. At this point, the shim, the little plastic shims might fall out and you just prise upwards. Okay, sometimes it wants to come easily, sometimes it just won't. 
there we go now I can't stress enough take your time with that and you'll see in here hopefully I don't know if you can see with the camera the plastic clips are part of the glazing moulding and these are quite brittle so it's not it's not um, happened too often but sometimes these snap upon removal of the body now that's the body kind of off I'll put that well out of the way put that up here actually and I can get rid of the shims you will need these possibly putting the the body back on check that the small black lamp irons above each buffer have not fallen out All right it's they easily become detached especially with a 477 which has got the the jumper cables sometimes they've actually become attached to those orange jumper cables and they they pop out or they come off so just watch what you're doing with that one especially I said with the maybe a Scott Rail 477 okay it's now time to fit the decoder um, just a quick tour of the insides of the 47. This well here is where you could fit a speaker. But the problem is when Backman sent it from the factory, all this wiring is nice and neatly braided. And you have to kind of reroute that um, each side of the speaker enclosure. So it's, again, not the quickest to fit a sound um, and speaker too. The circuit board here houses the blanking chip, the 21 pin blanking chip. And to get that out, you will kind of prise it with your fingers, don't use a pair of pliers here, you can just prise it up, upwards gently, okay, you don't want to force it, because then if you break the pins you're, you've had it, alright, so that gets kept, in my case, in with the, the box and the accessory pack etc in the 47 box, so that goes in there, you find now you've got your 21 pin exposed, in comes the decoder of your choice, I tend to just stick with the 3655721 pin from Backman. It, it works well. It's I think it's 15 to 17 pounds. It's decent value. It's not it's not a cheap and nasty one, but it's not a top of the range one either. But it does what I need it to do. This is a you know a, a lesson in over packaging in my opinion. Tiny little decoder and a massive pack. But hey ho, we're trying to cut down on the plastic. But Backman seemed to have missed that memo. On the back actually it's quite handy that it does have all the, the CVs values and, and what you can alter on the on the decoder itself. The 21 pin, you'll find at the top left hand side of that chip there's the a blank one if you like. That relays to the blank or the missing pin on the, the circuit board and it slides in. Now very carefully press it down until the pins are flush with the top of the decoder. You can see you'll be able to see the, the brass, copper, whatever pins there. And that is the decoder sitting correctly on top of the circuit board. The next thing you should do is test it um, on a rolling road or on the track. Now, prior to even taking the body shell off, you should always run a new local in in DC then you, you go about fitting the, the decoder. So I'll check this, the seat, this address will always be set to three, which is the default from the factory settings. So you can choose decoder number three and run it on your rolling road or your layout. This is to check that it's in the right way. It's, it's easier to fit a 21 pin like this. The eight pins tend to have harnesses and it's sometimes easier to get them round the wrong way because they're coloured wires and such and that will affect the running characteristics especially the, the configuration of the lighting so all I'll do now is I'll put this on the layout give it a test and then I'm, I'm fairly certain it's okay I could then go back to the next stage and, and um, move on having tested it and I'm now happy with its running I've not altered any of the CVs yet or you know messed around with the decoder anyway it's still at factory settings and the address number three what I would really want to do now is fit the buffer beam detail before I put the body on. Um, and the real reason I do that is I'm using glue and tiny wee, you know, um, pipe work and stuff. And I always fit it to the number one end where the driver is. 
and it goes here. Now, if I'm using super glue, you've got to be very careful as well. I don't want to glue anywhere near the body shell. So I always fit the buffer beam detail before I stick the body on. And that's what I'm going to do now. Right, that's the buffer beam detail put in place now. I've only fitted it to the number one end because I want to keep the tension lock coupler at the number two end. And if I have it at both ends, it tends to fill the coupler. So just one end for me. Next bit is to put the body back on. Line it up correctly. Now when I mean correctly, sometimes it's easy to have the, the, the body sitting too far in one direction. So what I really need to do is make sure it's sitting correctly over the chassis. And it should, there's a bit of giving the, the buffer beam area of the, the chassis. So just slide it over like that, slide it over like this. So that it's sitting correctly over the, the clips are in position with the doors. You might need your plastic shims here again, but you might not. It's a simple case of pulling the, the shell out again and it clipping into the clips so that there is, you know, a, a nice clean edge there. Same at the other end. Again, just prise it out with your fingers and the other two push the chassis into the body shell. So there I have the body shell now fitted back onto the chassis. You be able to tell if it's correct or not because there's two steps there and there's two sets of holes that line up with the actual you know, um, steps. If they're in line you've got the body on correctly and there should be no big gaping gaps at the corner here where the, the body kind of curves around the corner. That's the body now on and the screws are ready to go in but before you do that I just want quick little check to make sure the body is located correctly. There should be no gaps underneath the, the cab door clips. If there is a gap there, you've just maybe not located the body correctly, so watch what you're doing there. After that, it's a simple case of getting the screws and popping them back in and tightening them up. Now, a word of caution here, they do go in fairly easily, but when you get, obviously, to when they start to bite, tighten it and then maybe a quarter turn backwards so they're not tight tight. Okay, they're not going to fall out. The body shell's not going to come off. But you just got to watch that you don't, don't over tighten them. So when you come to take it off um, in months and years to come, you strip the thread. With the, the nose screws, I use a small pair of tweezers to get there located in the hole. And once they're located in the hole, move the bogey touch, and on you go. They should go in very easily as well. There's not much, there's not as much tightening to these ones involved. And there we go. Okay. Do the same to the other end, and the job's done.